Happy Bunnies, please. Welcome to the basement. Welcome to the station. Why are you at it? Why you have everyone's attention? You have to match why Bunnies is necessary quality. You must have it. Never, ever. Confident. You have to believe that you can do everything. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we've invited Mr. Lee jong tae the Chief Executive Officer of Kosfani, one of the most widely recognized men in the world economy. I hear you're quite a busy man these days. Thanks for coming to the show. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. I see that you're a humble man. Um. OK, I've come up with tons of embarrassing questions for you to answer tonight. Are you ready? <laughs> I hope I will not end up embarrassing you. Oh, me too. <laughs> okay, shall we start then? Let's start with the easy questions. Cosphony is the name of your now global company. What does the name stand for? Yeah, Cosphony is the name of the company, my company. It's the name of I have had in mind for a very long period of time. Ever since I was just an employee at a company, I used to dream of this future where I would own a company, and I would talk to my wife about naming it Cosphony. Gosh, 12 years already have passed by since. When I asked my wife, honey, what should I name the company if I get to own one? My wife thought of it for days, and she came up with the name Cosphony, combining cosmos and symphony. You know, Scientists often say the great universe we live in now needs all types of different theories to be synthesized in a harmonic way in order to be understood. Each planet, each galaxy, and each black hole is part of this colossal stage where this magnificent cosmic symphony is being played. I guess my wife had a vision of this harmony when she came up with the name Cosphony. It is a grand vision, truly fitting a company as global and as large as yours. Is there any one thing behind all of your actions for your current success? I mean, I want to know what got you all the money and the fame that you have now. <laughs> money and fame? Well, a company is an um, organization for profits, basically. So money and fame are, to a degree, um, a natural byproducts of the dream you consistently follow or of taking a challenge. That theme of my actions for success, I think essentially has two parts. One is the management with vision, and the other is the courage to take challenges. Bet all you can and change the courses of the game in your favor. Be creative in your approach to your enterprise. Be committed to creating new values for society. These are what drive me to the things. I guess mm, these are what lead me to the money and fame. <laughs> okay, so those are your drives. I guess those driving forces need to be fueled by a certain amount of passion, which is characteristic common to all the business leaders that I've met so far. I agree. Another noticeable thing in these business passionate leaders with the yeah. heart of the young are yeah. surprisingly very humble. What do you think of this humbleness? Wow, well, that's a good question. I think you answered it right. Humbleness is one of the chief virtues that make great leaders of any organization. It's something I've always kept in mind since my days as an you know, ordinary employee. If you ask me, I have to say people should be humble because they cannot know everything. A leader is someone who is able to drive people to be as creative as they can to reach their potential and their contribution to the good of their organizations. How could a leader do that unless he is humble in his approach? Humbleness in this way becomes a necessity. It is only when you are humble that you can open the doors to other people's minds and get them to cooperate with you. I think that you can find your teacher only when you are humble. If you are not humble, you will not notice any great teacher around you. You may have the world's smartest person among your friends, but you will never know he is a good teacher unless he is humble enough to communicate with you. That's why humbleness is a necessary quality. You must, have, you must have in order to survive in today's, you know, the competitive world. 
What's that smile supposed to mean? Is that smile coming from humbleness? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm just funny yeah. you always smile. By the way, I notice in your endeavors up to now that you tend to rely on really innovative ideas, really revolutionary concepts to solve problems rather than oh. using traditional or conventional means. Mm. What motivates you to be innovative? For instance, a recent article here in the New York Times has praised your contribution to the quality assurance of MS Office 2021, which was so good that the customer dissatisfaction rate with the product was only 0.5%. Yeah, 0.5%. Yeah, that's true. I believe, you know, the complete destruction is necessary for the, you know, the true act of creation. You need to break the mold and destroy the old system to captivate people's attention. And while you're at it, while you have everyone's attention, you have to make sure to transform completely to exceed their expectation. This is the core mechanism of creation and creative management of an organization. The Microsoft project that I took up, in this sense, is another example of what I did with the home network projects from Samsung Electronics and Razer 2021 phone project for the model dollar. It's really a pleasure to talk with a person as humble and as open-minded as you, Mr. Oh, Lee. Thank you. How would you describe the style of your own leadership? I understand you attended the Sloan MBA program at MIT. Is your leadership something that you learned at that school? Well, thank you for your generous description. The fundamental part of my business philosophy is the spirit of yes. My experience of working as an engineer at Samsung and Microsoft was not enough to start my own enterprise. It was the qualities of leadership that I learned at the Sloan School at MIT that allowed me to develop my own philosophy. My leadership philosophy is basically servant leadership. Yes, I founded the company I'm heading as the chief executive officer now. But even, you know, since the beginning, I've never thought of myself as ruling over other people by using my title or position. Instead, I try my best, you know, my jobs in serving all the directors who serve with me, in serving all the team members and the representatives of the in the field. These sales representatives out in the field, in turn, have to you know, serve their customers with equal respect and zeal as they serve their superiors in the company. We have to serve our customers and shareholders humbly. And I think I have to serve as a good you know, example in this regard. Many smart business leaders cannot use more than 20% of potential of the, all their employees combined. And the organization, like a human body, has hands, feet, head, and heart. But some leaders just end up using their employees only like hands and feet. The continuous learning program in my company allows workers in the production line to learn more, to acquire more experience and knowledge so that they can take advantage of all the opportunities offered to them. Everyone needs to learn more. People working in the fields with which the company deals are your partners, not your main employees. Their creativity must be enhanced so that they will you know, enjoy inventing and innovating. I'm basically a believer in human capacity. The ultimate source of the com company's competitiveness is the human resources God. A single leader may get a kick out of leading you know, this company the way he wants, but it's not the way the other parts of the organization want. That individual-centered management is basically, I think, old school. One of the primary quality today's business leaders must have is communication skills. Right. How do you assess the importance of communication in business management? Do you communicate with your employees often? Do you impose your own philosophy on them? Well, mm, even when I was working at Microsoft and Samsung, I used to hold one-on-one -on -one meetings with each of the employees I was in charge of. These meetings are ne necessary for me to identify the current status and the circumstances of each of my, each of my employees on a um, regular basis. I continue these meetings in my current job as well. Communication includes not only talking, but also listening, right? 
Of course. Yeah. What's hard to attain is the ability to truly listen. You have to be an you know, active listener in any conversation you're having. It's only by actively listening that you learn something. There's something you learn in turn provides you with the basis of which on which you can grow further. Right, very true. Mr. Lee, you're a champion of so-called sensible management. Is sensible management something a business leader must practice? Well, um, one of the benefits of working in the same field is that you accumulate experience and expertise in that area. This, on the other hand, could mean that your creativity and your readiness to take up challenges may decrease over time. Sensibility is important because it is important to remain motivated, to think as creatively as possible to take risks. You're also well known for your teachings of ethical and transparent management. In an interview published in last week's issue of The Economist, you said, and I'm quoting, I have no fear because I am completely free. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did exactly do you mean by that? Yeah, that's the good question. That's exactly what I wanted to be asked. You can be the most powerful person in this room or in your organization, but if the process through which you arrive at that position is less than fair or just, you are still a slave of all your past actions that, and mistakes. It is these shameful actions of the past that prevent even some of the brightest people from, I mean, moving on from completely engaging with the future. It is unfortunate that the, sometimes the whole community and society suffer because of some of the wrongdoings committed by the, you know, their leaders in the past. You have to be free from these kinds of wrongdoings in order to leap forward into the future, in order not to be held down by fear of retribution or guilt. Right. Okay, now let's talk about um, corporate ethics. Kasumi has been maintaining the highest ethical evaluation results since its early days. Yeah. How is this possible? Well, I think, you know, the transparency is not a matter of morality or ethics anymore, but a matter of survival. Everything you have built up so far can disappear in a second. What's the matter of transparency and ethical management catches up with you? Everything you have built over 10 or well, even, you know, the 20 years can just disappear like that. I've always been worried about this kind of issue. I believe my company should be the champion of this ethical and transparent management. Remember, there's nothing you want to hide from others and you will be able to be free in your pursuits and endeavors. Now, can we talk about your personal life? <laughs> you know, I know, part. well, it's okay. You know, I know you're a pretty busy person traveling all around the world. So when you're as busy as you are right now, how do you educate your children? I hear you're quite interested in the education of your children as well. Well, you know, frankly speaking, you know, I have to admit that I haven't made much of conscious effort to teach or educate my kids. Since, you know, I have always been so busy, as you know. All I can do for them is just to watch them grow and to be with them, and even when I'm not with them, you know, you know, when I make calls to other people or work on something, I want my children to see how hardworking I am. Nothing I want to teach them will come out of my mouth. I want it learned by my example. <clears throat> Mr. Lee, I've heard you recently had an exhibition of the photos of Africa. Oh. <laughs> was, there any special reason, that. <laughs> was there any special reason you decided to hold this photo exhibition? You know, with my hair growing gray increasingly, I've developed this new habit of reflecting on my past and present. And I keep asking myself the same question. Am I still taking new challenges? I try to do new things at least once or twice a year. An exhibition for photos from Africa is something I had never done before. It was challenging to me. I wanted my example to be challenging and inspiring for my employees as well. Now I see your life is marked by this distinct spirit to take up challenges and passion. What is the essence of that spirit to take up the challenges? 
<laughs> free to take up challenges sounds too grandiose to describe my attitude. I'm just naturally curious, and I like learning new things. I'm curious about everything. When I used to work as an employee, um, I was curious about the whole processes. From how all these numbers that I dealt with were made and programmed, and to what marketing strategies are used, and how those numbers were converted for uses. Being curious about all these things has allowed me to transcend the narrow field of work I was doing and see other areas. People can think only, only as much as they know. I have the fear that there is a great part of the world that I don't know about because I don't have enough knowledge. That's one of the reasons I decided to join a doctoral program recently you know, at a graduate school. This bottomless intellectual curiosity is one of the major characteristics of my personality that have, you know, led me up to this point. Is there anything you want to say to the young people in Korea? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to keep in mind that whatever I want to say will reflect what I have experienced so far, and I will not be free from the path I have taken. Live honestly, work hard to the basics, and learn to be patient. Some young people are short-tempered, you know. And they easily become despondent and even give up after a few their efforts to go aw awry. I want to tell them never, ever to give up. Be confident enough to believe that you can do everything. You have to be perseverant and even obsessive in order, to, in order to achieve something you truly want. The best way to grow this confidence is to exercise your own power and will in making decisions. After 20 years of my career as a working employee, the one difference between managers and non-managers became clear to me. A manager is someone who, whether he, sp whether he spends thousands, thousands of million dollars by signing a check, he seriously questions himself whether his decision is to spend the amount of money is beneficial or harmful to the whole organization. Someone who thinks that he can sign whatever checks or documents give to him, thinking that his decision will be received by you know, the director, vice president, or the president of the company, in the end, is essentially not a manager because he's not willing to make a true decision in his own capacity for the company, I mean. In order to foster responsible leadership uh, in my employees, I give the final authority on decision making to my subordinates. Once I found in my own company, I still do not sign the checks. It is a way of encouraging my employees to learn. They may hate me for this. They may get stressed out for having, making good decisions for the company. But they come out in the end learning necessary management skills and leadership qualities. Well, we've seen it here tonight that the hero of the 21st century is someone as humble, as sensible, and in warm heart as Mr. Lee. I'd like to thank Mr. Lee on behalf of the audience and the staff members for sharing this invaluable message despite his busy schedule. So, Lee, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much.